Now that the hard work of planning and planting a new orchard is done, the long work of managing the orchard begins. Over the next 18 to 30 years, the orchard will have to be looked after, managed and monitored, so that it will produce good volumes of good quality fruit. For the first few years, the young trees have to be taken care of to ensure that they grow vigorously so that they start producing marketable fruit as soon as possible. Assuming that your cultural practices are in order and that you will have all the necessary pest and disease control measures in place, consult the CRI's citrus production guidelines if in doubt. You should see the trees coming into production within three to four years. To comply with the requirements of accreditation systems, such as Global GAP, you have to keep records of a wide range of production practices. This already forms a good basis for the sort of orchard records that make for an effective management tool. But it does require that one views record keeping as more than a compliance issue and rather as a function essential to management. Central to the record keeping that is necessary for effective orchard management is the tree census. A tree census accurately records how many trees there are in every orchard on the farm and include details of the cultivar, rootstock and planting year of each orchard block. Apart from being necessary for the sake of compliance and a handy management tool, tree census information must be submitted to the Citrus Growers Association every year. This enables the CGA to keep track of the citrus plantings per cultivar, per region, per province and for the whole country. It also enables them to develop long-term projection models, which use current planting data combined with data on the budwood sold by the Citrus Foundation block to project the planted area and production per cultivar for the next 10 to 15 years. It would be tempting to think that the tree census can be recorded when the orchard blocks are planted and then to assume that this will remain accurate and true for the whole lifespan of the orchard. This is, however, not a safe assumption to make. Keeping the map and plan that you developed while planning for the establishment of new citrus plantings is an excellent start, but this cannot be the end of it. Things happen to trees in orchards, and it should be recorded whenever there is significant tree loss or replacement of lost trees. To be safe, it is good practice to double-check tree census records at least every three years by physically counting the trees. If you, for some reason, do not have any records of orchards that have already been planted, it is essential that you put these records together. Hopefully, you will at least have a map of the farm with numbered orchard blocks and the area of the blocks in hectares. If you do not have this, you will need to obtain a map from the survey office or have one drawn up by a surveyor. A surveyor will also be able to measure the area of the orchards for you. If you know the area of an orchard block, you can use the tree spacing to calculate the number of trees planted in that area. For instance, if you know that the tree spacing is 6 by 3, meaning 6 meters between rows and 3 meters between trees in the rows, you can work out that there are 555 trees planted per hectare, as follows. 6 times 3 equals 18, meaning that one tree takes up 18 square meters. One hectare equals 10,000 square meters, a hectare being in an area that is 100 meters by 100 meters. So if we divide 10,000 meters by 18 meters, we get 555 meaning that in one hectare of 10,000 square meters, there is space for 555 trees if they each take up 18 square meters. Once you know how many trees are planted per hectare, it is short work to calculate the number of trees in each orchard block and on the whole farm. It is a good idea to double check your calculations by physically counting the trees in at least one or two of the blocks. Also be careful to assume that the tree spacing on the whole farm will be the same. It can vary between orchard blocks depending on the cultivar and orchard layout. 
Determining what cultivar was planted in orchards that you don't have records for and how old the trees are is more difficult. Your best bet is to first try and get more information, starting with individuals that might have been involved in the planning or establishment of the orchards. You can also approach the nursery that supplied the trees, where they may still have records of the sale. If you cannot get this information, your last port of call would be to consult an expert to help you determine the cultivar. From the growth habits of the trees, the maturation dates of the fruit and the fruit characteristics, an expert will at least be able to make an educated guess, which will be accurate enough for your purposes. Other records that must be kept for individual orchard blocks include production records, spray records, weather data, results of annual leaf sample analyses and yield records showing volume, internal and external fruit quality measurements, maturity indexing data, export packout percentage, and so on. You need to keep track of what is happening in the orchards on your farm. Remember always, you cannot manage what you do not measure. There are a great many things that can go off the rails in citrus production, and finding out about a threat once it has already done damage to your trees and to production is too late. With good record-keeping systems, you will be able to pick up deviations before they develop into problems and be able to address them in good time.